For more than a decade, FTI has strived to become the leader in the aftermarket, performance, transmission, and converter industry. We've joined forces with McLeod Driveline Components under the leadership of Top Fuel Funny Car Pilot Paul Lee, and now have a larger distribution network, more resources, and more power. Come see us in the pits and ask how you can join the FTI family. It's not cheating. It is the competitive edge. It's time for an inside look at the most powerful motorsport on the planet. WFO Radio, NHRA Nitro. This is WFO Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back. WFO Radio back on the air following the Pep Boys NHRA Nationals out there at Maple Grove Raceway, race one of the NHRA countdown. What a race it was. Oh my goodness. The house of chaos, Maple Grove, packed house, sold out crowd, the energy, infectious, everybody just loving NHRA drag racing. And it was a great time. Some shocking results, upset victories. We're going to talk about it all. And also look ahead towards Charlotte, the ZMAX Dragway, Carolina Nationals, Betway, Carolina Nationals, and super excited to get out there and go again. I think one thing you will all see is that most of the drivers, especially the ones that won, are eager to get back out there and race again as soon as is possible. But then again, the ones that didn't win, they're probably eager to get out there and race again as soon as is possible. Then we'll be headed to St. Louis to complete three in a row. What an event. It was awesome. We're going to talk about it with the voice of the NHRA, Alan Reinhardt. He will be joining us in a few minutes. But first, first up, we're going to have on location winter views. Went around the pits, connected with everybody, talked to Erica, talked to Austin, talked to Robert, Joey Gladstone, went in his trailer. A lot of great stuff. I think you're going to love because we were just kind of getting them at their most uh, celebratory moments. But also, went over and spoke with Tim Wilkerson. Like, how do you not feel for Tim Wilkerson and Richard Hartman and that whole team? They worked so hard and teams came over to help them. And so I went over and talked to Tim and he spent all his time like thanking the teams that came to help him in the final, just so much emotion. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, talk a little bit about the Koretsky family, the house of chaos, what they did. Hopefully those of you that Watch on NHRA.TV could easily see the updates. And I, they had undersold me, man. I, I tell you what, they had lowered my expectations. Kid Chaos said, yeah, we, we, you know, we put some paint on some things, but the real changes are coming next year. Said, okay, I'm happy no matter what. Nope. They updated so much from the you know floors in the media center to painting everything inside to asphalt everywhere all the painted lines it's amazing what a new coat of paint can do to a racetrack but they just went over the top and you know there was a hitch here or there i don't think it's even worth mentioning they've got a list they did a great job and the fans everybody i spoke to were just over the moon super excited about the investment of the Koretsky family and whether it be Kyle who kind of got the responsibility as being the face of the operation to Kenny Jr. and Taylor and Karen and Kenny, everybody. And it really felt like a family atmosphere. And so, and we got in there early on Sunday, boy. And it, it turned out Sunday was actually manageable and they did a great job. So we'll get to all of that. But first, I want to tell you about the people who make it possible for me to go WFO. Without these folks, I can't chase drag racers around for a living. I'll be working at the lumberyard like Danny Noonan. And that will be fine too. But the first thing I want to talk about is the stampede of speed, guys. Yes, we mentioned the next two races, the one that follows at the legendary Texas Motorplex. First of all, tomorrow, 12 noon, Christy Meyer Johnson and Scott Palmer are going to join us as we preview the stampede of speed. I am going to be there for just about the full event. The dates are up on our banner here, but don't worry, I'll make it bigger. I want to take, tell you all about it. Just a tremendous event last year leading into the fall nationals. There's going to be funny car chaos. There's going to be nitro pro mods. There's going to be concerts. There's going to be music. There's going to be everything. And I'm going to tell you how to get free tickets here on WFO radio. I'm going to get down there on the 8th of October. And the race ends on the 16th. We're going to go all the way through for the stampede of speed. Their goal, 
their goal and my goal is that everybody out there in the WFO universe, and they want they want a bigger audience than even that. They want everybody to make plans to travel from outside of the state into the state. So how are they going to do it? How are they going to do it? That's a great question. They're offering you free tickets for several of the days. Boom. Scan that QR code. We're serving two purposes. You don't have to look at my mug. Number one, that's purpose number one. And number two, if you can scan this QR code, don't worry. You're probably saying to yourself, Joe, just post the link, bud. And we'll just pick it up in the chat section. And I'm going to do that now. It's going to do, it's going to take you to the same place where you just fill out a form and you can get free tickets that are good the 10th through the 14th. And you might be saying to yourself, well, when, when is that? That includes Friday of the fall nationals. This is tremendous what they are doing. So the link is up in the chat section. You go to that link. You fill out the form. They send you free tickets for the 10th through the 14th. Valid only those days. Like Funny Car Chaos, that's a special event. Part of it, they deserve to make their money to keep drag racing going. So I would buy tickets to Funny Car Chaos. Get there early. Get the free tickets from the 10th to the 14th. And then buy your NHRA tickets and go to the whole thing. I'm going to be there working on the Texas Motorplex social media for the Stampede of Speed, introing concert and hanging out with Palmer. And just uh, there's a champion's dinner that you can get in. You're going to cost extra money, but you're going to get one-on-one -on -one time personal interviews with some of the greatest champions in drag racing. We're going to tell you more about that as time goes by, especially on the show tomorrow. But join us for the Stampede of Speed. Here's the QR code one more time. How are we supposed to do that, Joe? Like we're scared. Well, if you're watching on your computer, you scan it with your phone. If you're watching on your phone, yeah, then you got to hit another link or something. You can scan it with another phone. But you know where to go. And, and here's the website, stampedeofspeed.com slash SOS ticks slash. So for those of you that are listening, bottom line, we want to see you at the Stampede of Speed. In a couple of weeks, it's at the start of October, beginning on October 7th. And I will be there. But thanks to the Texas Motorplex, they're trying to blow this thing up bigger and better than ever. And we're trying to make it the biggest drag race that has ever happened in the state of Texas. Awesome. You already heard about FTIPerformance.com. Whether it be the 93B torque converter that Austin Williams took to victory at the U.S. Nationals. Or Troy Williams winning big money bracket races and Donovan winning big money bracket races. The guys that use FTI Performance are going to the winner's circle. Now, you might not be a big money bracket racer, but you can use FTI. They'll do a shift kit for a turbo 350. They'll do a transmission and torque converter for a monster truck. And they've got it all figured out. Go to fti-performance.com. Phillips Connect. Smart trailer technology for the transportation industry. If you are in the trailer biz, the trailer game, you've got, let's say you got a small company like Amazon and you're looking how to keep track of everybody, keep everybody safe over the road. Phillips-connect.com. Go to the website, check them out. On a more personal note, Justin Ashley is the points leader and has gone out and had a very successful first event in his championship. Pretty amazing. Phillips-connect.com. Go check him out. Find out more. And yes, that 300 mile per hour bonus is available. 300 mile per hour. I'm wondering, like, how long is it going to take to get that? How long is it going to last? 30 grand. 30K. That's big money. Thanks to Phillips-connect and just some of the sensors that are available for their trucks and trailers. Appreciate it. Those guys, phillips-connect.com. Bernie's Speed Shop. Josh Hart had a birthday yesterday. Bernie's.com. If you're in the Ocala area and you're looking for classic American muscle, they've got over $5 million in inventory down there that you can purchase. They also do consignments and pretty much everything from frame-off restoration that you can do to a muscle car or a classic car or a restoration. Go to bernie's.com, follow them on social media and stay up with what they're doing. I think it is great. And when Josh tells the story that he started out going door to door, asking people, can I detail your car? That was the start of Bernie's. It is a classic American entrepreneurial journey. And now multi-million dollar shop, 100,000 square feet. Check them out, Bernie's.com. Total Seal Piston Rings, similar situation. Learning so much. Reinhardt was over there last week recording some things for NHRA's website. And you're going to learn a lot about Ring Seal, the Hidden Horsepower podcast another way to learn about ring seal. If you're not an engine builder, but you're having an engine built, you got to go to your engine builder and you've got to talk to them about total seal. And there are so many elements, but it's vital. It's important. There's horsepower in your engine that just needs to be unlocked. 
with a couple of important things like your cylinder hone and also your piston rings. Watch out for those videos by Reinhardt, but also go to TotalSeal.com to find out more. You can order a single ring. You can order ring sets, and they encourage you to call them Keith Jones, Lake Speed. They're all there ready for you at TotalSeal.com. Later on in the show, we'll tell you about Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. We'll tell you a little bit about SamTech.edu. Of course, my buddy Marvin Rodak going to be a big part of my stampede of speed experience down there, 817-924-6821. Nitro Joe Morrison just got his low ET of his career. We'll tell you how to become a Patreon and even about our friends at Torque Calibration Services of Australia. But first, we're going to kick it back out to the, to the uh, Maple Grove Pep Boys NHRA Nationals and catch up with some of the winners. And then we'll go into Reinhardt and we'll discuss everything that happened. Don't worry. We're going to discuss everything later on in the show. But most important business comes first, which is Joey Gladstone, the Pro Stock Motorcycle winner and points leader just a tremendous victory you want to see inside his trailer you want to see the celebration that all went down if you're a fan of joey we ask you to share this like that's how this show gets out there and what we do gets out you share it and uh let's hope that it all works wfo go joey gladstone diamond w nhra on fox cameraman we're gonna go right up in here in the house, Joey Gladstone, you just did it again. Yes, how are you, brother? It's good to have you in here, Joe. Yeah, this is where it all happens. Is anything yeah. secret? Oh, how about these, by the way? Yeah. The cornhole. We didn't talk yeah. a lot about that. That's this a big is, deal. This is our humble abode. This is a. Uh, you know, see Corey built a Murphy bed. That's where our crew guys sleep. Yeah, we do it. Hey, man, we do it. We do it on the uh, on the low around here. You know, we got a small trailer. We got, you know, we got good people, good friends. And Dave. Big Dave on the clutch. I had my clutch child in all weekend. Didn't make a single mistake. Awesome. Awesome. Dave I love, used to I work for him. NHRA. He was my buddy down yeah, there. You know that? Was, yeah, he was, he's and then we became friends with him through NHRA. And then we just said we had to have this guy out here. We gotta keep him out here. Dave's yeah. gotta be here. I mean Dave is NHRA drag racing. He really is. I mean, Dave is. Thank you. Like he knew. Yeah. Dave knew to close Dave the knows. door because this might end up on social you know what, media. You know, Dave, you know what they call him? No. The, the mayor of the midway. Because, you know, he worked on the Midway for a while. I, of course. And he, I mean, he knew everybody. He knows how to get things done. You need a, anything you need at the racetrack, Dave. Yeah. Veteran. Yeah. Also, right? Navy? That's very true. That's Navy. Very true. Yeah. Air Force. Air Force. Air Force, Air Force veteran. That's right. 75th birthday. Right. All right, Joe, man. Three wins, but this one is really big because it's the first race yeah. of the countdown. And, you, you know, there's like that championship that we talk about. But this one, your daughter's birthday. You're yeah. able to deliver a Wally. Yeah, that part's really cool. Um, at the start of the weekend, um, I was like, you know, well, hopefully we make it past first round. You know, at least get, you know, salvage the weekend. Um, we qualified eighth um, in a really tough field, though. Everybody out here was so tough. There was like eight bikes in the 70s for qualifying. But uh, we kind of learned on the last session on Q3 when we were like top four, top five, we were like, all right, we got something to race with them. You know, like we... We got a bike that we can, you know, at least compete with. It's not Matt Smith fast, but it's it's still fast enough. So, and then uh, that gives a little confidence going into race day. And um, and then it just, it, man, I'm telling you, when it, those days and, uh, and the drag racers and people that have won before, I, th I feel like they know what I'm talking about when, you know, you feel like, I don't know, it's just this feeling comes over you where nothing can go wrong. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna be your day. And the stress goes away and and then it happens, and uh, it's unreal, man. It's unreal to win here. I grew up 30 minutes from here. Yeah, talk I about was, that. I was man, kid on the bike. Like, yeah. wow, what a great story. Yeah. I was uh, I was two weeks old when I first came here, and my dad actually showed me a picture in the winter circle of me when I was like two or three, sitting on a, an old scooter, uh, you know, just you know, you know, yep. trying to rev it up. And I was like two or three years old, and uh, I watched my dad race here so much, and we uh, then, like you said, I was a uh, um, you know, with a kid getting kicked out and stuff. I was, I was the one that I was, always bring my bicycle. We never had, I never had any pit vehicles. I was never that bold, but uh, I'd always bring my bicycle and and then I'd, I'd ride around for 30 minutes and then security would start chasing me and then I'd dip in between some trailers and you know lose them and or if they catch me they take me back to my parents and tell me not do it again. I do it again and it's just just growing up at the racetrack such a special deal and growing up here it was was special and uh, this is. This is definitely a special place to me. And to have my daughter here, like, on her birthday to win, like, 
this is something I'll, I'll never forget. This is just as just as big as as Sonoma, but it, it probably actually a little little more special. Well, the fact that you appreciate it so much, I think, makes people appreciate you. Yeah. It's not that, not that anybody else is entitled, right? Like we went over to Matt Smith. Dude, He's not entitled at all. Dude, but it's so tough out here. Nobody, nobody is supposed to win out here. Like uh, you can't take anybody lightly. Like, um, you know, I mean, look at look at Mark Ingerson. Like those guys, yeah. they're doing so. Good. I'm so proud of those guys. And uh, you know, even in the semis, I was like, you know what? Even if things don't go my way right here, I'm super pumped for Mark and Parker. You know, they're kind of like us. They do it. They got a small trailer. There's only two or three of them over there. And they're and they're kicking ass and taking names and and going fast and it's it's good to have other people in the class that are going to the later rounds. Yeah, de it's, definitely. It's, I think it's important. Well, for I, I'm love. This is the first time I've been in here, everybody, yeah. and I think this is great. You're like that's actually that's that's one of our motors. We got another one under this trash bag here. We can't af we can't afford fancy engine covers like all the other guys. But <laughs> give it time. <laughs> but, give it time. But, but that's actually that's actually Corey's bike. Um, that's the one that that uh, the Charlotte crash bike and. Uh, it had to go back to Vanson Hines and get front half because it took a pretty heavy impact. But uh, we've been carting it around. We got enough parts and pieces to put it back together. But in that in that state, and Corey not riding right now, it's pretty easy to. It's actually a really efficient way to cart a whole other motorcycle uh -huh. it's worth of parts. Right. So, and we've already had to take a few things off it, like um, air air uh, air over air solenoids and stuff. Well, it's not a solenoid; it's a switching valve. But uh, the sub harness we had to take off of it and stuff like that. And, it's kind of nice because you know exactly where to look to go get it. Because you know? it's on the bike. Yeah. That makes see. How about no that, folks? We just learned it. something right there. Like where to? Where is it in a drawer? Oh, look through the drawer. No, it's on the bike. Get it off the spare bike. Right. Put it on the bike. Right. All right. Rest of the countdown. I mean, I'm my analysis is that you're feeling good, and whatever happens, happens. You tell me. Man, the rest of the countdown. It, my my approach to, to the rest of the countdown is going to be race by race, round by round, really, um, round by round, because uh, all the rounds have to go right, all the qualifying rounds have to go right, you have to learn, you have to figure out what's going on with the bike in the qualifying rounds to learn what you need to do for eliminations, and uh, it's whoever's going to have the uh, the best uh, strategy is going to win, and it can be anybody, I mean, we saw what Matt did in, in Indy, um, you know, I don't know, he was like fourth or fifth or something, and came out on top by like 40 points, you know, that points and a half is big, so... You know, and I, I feel blessed to beat him once. It's probably not going to keep happening that way. Like, just statistically speaking, he's a stud. Yeah. He's a five-time champ. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my my damn best. You know, I mean, he's. I, I think he pulls the best out of the class. You know, he 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 makes everybody step up. You know, I mean, people are complaining about the V twin rules, but it's really it's uh, MSR V twins that are really at the cream of the crop. So it's like. I don't know. It just says a lot about their program and what they do. And you know. I love I love your attitude, Joey. Yeah. Congratulations, big win, Dave. Big Thanks, win, Joe. and we'll see you in a few days. Thanks, Joe. Love WFO. All right. How about that, Joey Gladstone? Big Dave. Happy birthday, Air Force. Seventy-five years. Pretty amazing stuff. Really appreciate. Uh, those guys and Joey three wins on the season. Now that's uh, the leader in the clubhouse tied with Matt Smith. They also have three, but uh, pretty amazing. And thank you all for sharing. I'm not putting your comments up on the screen. Like just in case I want to get through these pre-recorded interviews off of video files. I really hope that the social media companies don't do some sort of algorithmic music thing that lowers the volume at certain points, which happens from time to time, um, because they don't want you to have any music anywhere on your video. But that was not only outside, but outside a trailer. Um, who knows, though? Who knows? Uh, if that is the case, that's what just happened, folks. And you can always get audio only on our podcast feed. But next up, went over and saw Erica Enders after her 40th career victory leads the points the whole way resets doesn't say a word about it right just goes out there and gets it done let's hear from e all right wfo here with our pro stock winner erica all righty that's how you need to start if you want to be successful pretty good day at the races really great day at the races i think we accumulated every point that they had to offer except for one and uh just really proud of my team joe like I know that gets old hearing it from every driver, but if people knew what it took to, to make stuff like this happen, uh, they would definitely understand it. So my Melling Performance Chevy is obviously running on mean, but to come out the first race of the countdown swinging, 
and win in the fashion that we did. Low ET of every round of race day. Low ET every round of qualifying except for Friday when Bo got us by a few thou. I think it just speaks volumes of our program and to have an all elite final with my teammate Troy Coughlin is uh, pretty badass. Now Ron Togler has got his crunk cup that he breaks out when he wins. <laughs> what is this? This is my sparkly cup. I like things that sparkle. So. But we only drink out of it when? When we win. When we drive the bitch back. Oh, so. exactly. What Cheers. you just did. How did that go? Do it. Awesome. How was the drive back? It was cool. It was downhill most of the way. So uh, I got to coast a little bit. Didn't have to wear out my clutch too much. I was a little little apprehensive about driving it back because we've got so many in a row right now. But uh, Jake, my head engine guy, said, go ahead, do it. Let's go. So. Uh, you got to do it now, right? Like that like, beauty in the winter. So I know, and I signed so many drive that bitch back shirts this weekend. The fans are really supportive of it. We can hear it when they come, when we go through the stands and, uh, you know, back here at the pit, obviously, but. Yeah. And there you go. Erica Enders will go back and we'll try to fix that every once in a while. You know, there is a bit of a internet skip or a hang up or something. And so let's try to get back into that. Erica Enders. I'm, just, I'm so happy. You never won here. I've never won here. This is one like Sonoma, like 18 years it's, it's evaded us. And we got really close last year in the finals against GA and uh, he whipped me on the starting line. He whipped me at the finish line. We just got outrun and just outraced. So uh, to put it in the winner's circle today was really meaningful. And I had all the guys from People East here as well. So uh, they were here to celebrate. No guarantees. You go into the countdown, you lose all those points. And if you stumble, something breaks, first round, you're out, now you're behind. Uh, to be able to convert this first race, this might, the linchpin, it might be the most important race. You can certainly cause yourself some trouble in this race. <laughs> you definitely can. And, you know, being that it was a track that we haven't had much success at, you know, it's always a worry coming in here. I, I told the story in the press room, but coming in here last year, like my goal is just to get out of here clean in the semis. If I can just get to the semis, we'll still be okay. It's not a huge detriment. Um, but this year, the goal was obviously to win and uh, and we got it done. So starting off on the right foot is huge. Momentum in this game is huge. And we're gonna do our best to carry it. But right now, uh, you know, we've got some pretty significant horsepower. Mark's got a great, uh, great setup on that Melly Performance car and all my guys worked their tails off. So today was a, an extremely successful day, really meaningful, and uh, I'm glad to get it done. Congratulations, Erica. Thank you are the Joe. points leader, and it won't be Woo! long. We get to see you. See if we don't relinquish that. Right. Cheers. Good job, good job. There they go. There they go. Erica and Courtney and Erica Enders really getting up on the wheel. Troy Coughlin, runner-up, and a great day of pro stock racing. Those fans out there at Maple Grove, they love pro stock. They love it. And remember, Pro Stock was not supposed to be on the schedule initially for the first race at the House of Chaos, but they, you know, made some things happen. They added a race. Everybody got together, and thank goodness they did. They were so happy. Everybody was so happy. All right, let's keep on going, though. And folks, remember, it helps. I think it helps everybody when you share the show. Uh, when you see your favorite driver retweet or share or like or comment all those different there's algorithm based things going on here uh reinhardt is down there getting ready of course but we're going to keep on going we got two more to go and we're going to end off uh with the john force racing guys as robert height gets out there from the lead wins the race very dramatic race day let's hear what robert height had to say all right jfr fans this one's on you well 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 he's putting down his bag He's yeah. getting ready. Don't worry, you look pretty. Robert Height, seven wins on the season, from the lead in the points, 70, 60th of your career. It's a pretty good day at the races. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, uh, it's exactly what we said we needed to do, but actually. And we've learned to just wait. And this two shall pass. Is saying and doing, you know, scripting it, those are two different things. So. So proud of these guys, you know, uh, made, we got points every single run in qualifying, you know, with a 15 car field being number one's a big deal. And uh, just, we made it happen. And, you know, it's, Jimmy, it's, it's so cool that we get back to the pits and Jimmy's like, I love the way this thing's running. Okay. It's like, we're going to be a handful if this thing keeps running like it is and it's safe. Okay. Um, I think we learned some things from Indy, you know, we, Smoked the tires in the semis, backed it off way too much in the final against Caps, and it shook. It was weak. So, you know, uh, 
you always want to win Indy, but I'll tell you right now, if I had to trade a win in Indy or a win at Reading, not even a question. A win at Reading and the way this was done, it doesn't get any better than this. So I'm excited. We get a few days and we go right to Charlotte and start over again and, and try to get the job done. Um, you know, if you, could, if you could get a lead, a big lead, you know, then you start forcing people to make mistakes. Yes. Uh, but trust me, all these guys, they're only getting better and they're coming after us. So it's not going to get any easier from here on out. And we could go there and have a bad race and have. And so an internet flicker has us on pause with Robert Height. It's very unusual how that happens. Let's try to go back to it. A race to nothing. So um, I tell you, Tuesday morning after after the U.S. Nationals, you turn on NHRA.com and you see, you know, that used to have a 280-point lead down to 20 points. That gets your mind right, okay? And uh, we built a little cushion this weekend. But we got to keep doing that. So exciting. It is very exciting. So my, my whole angle is, as you know, the reason we're doing this, I love drag racing. I want to grow drag racing. It's not just fast cars that are loud going down the racetrack, right? It's competition at the highest level. And that's what I want people to feel like this intensity that you're feeling and I'm feeling. And the fact that, you know, Hagen's got to go through Tasca and then you go through Hagen and like these insane runs that we are experiencing. Yeah, well, a lot of things fell our way today uh, with Caps going out second round, and then you knew second round, a big hitter, Hagen or Task is falling. Okay, so that's two guys that are chasing you or out of here, uh, but you still got to follow through and do your job. Uh, you know, Hagen's no slouch. So there, That was going to be a tough race. And then we had to wait for a cleanup, an oil down, and, you know, you start second guessing, and, you know, even the crew chief starts second guessing. You know, should we back this thing off? And it's just... The way it played out was amazing, but um, having uh, having this competition the way it laid out for us today, we can't expect that every week, okay? Right. And Tim Wilkerson, he's back in the thick of things, okay? A great running car. You saw what he ran second round. It was it was it was awesome. So all I can say is uh, I got to give the Auto Club team an A plus, but uh, we got to celebrate a little tonight. Get our act together get to Charlotte and do the same thing but back to your point of the, the competition okay I remember in 2019 it came down to Hagen and I in the semifinals one run for a championship if he beats me he's a champ if I beat him I'm the champ I don't want to go down to Pomona like that again right okay the pressure like you just said and the competition level I don't want that pressure so we have to stay focused and try to get it done way before Pomona Robert, congratulations, huge win. You get to double up with Austin. Austin, the pressure's off, not the pressure's off, but the stress is diminished a little bit as he broke through for a win, those guys, that team. A double up for John Forks Racing here at Pep Boys Nationals. Congratulations, go celebrate. Thank you, I'm ready. Appreciate it. Robert Height with us here on WFO Radio. And just super exciting. Hopefully you guys are liking these Winter Circle interviews on location. We're going to Charlotte on Thursday morning. Rapid fire tomorrow. Uh, Christy Meyer Johnson from Texas Motorplex is going to be on the show along with Scott Palmer. 12 noon, we're going to be previewing the Stampede of Speed. And so this was the best we could do given the circumstance. And it's got its own character. In fact, I see that like pump truck coming around the corner. and gave me a little PTSD uh, to the moment because right after... I went and talked to Robert. I just kind of walked on down and talked to probably the happiest, most relieved racer of the entire deal, Austin Proc, who started off the season going to a final round, thought it was going to be like, this is it, and instead ran into a big, tough time. But 17th race, they get a win, and so do the Silver Stallions. Let's see what Austin had to say. Our top fuel winner. What's up, Austin? Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great day, exactly what we needed. You know, we, uh, we were coming in here 12th, and the only place we could go was up. And uh, what we needed to do was go get a win win today, and uh, that was the only way we were going to have a shot at this title. So uh, we did exactly that, and we're back in the mix of things. So crazy, like all year long. It's like Austin Proc is out there, and you're on the list, but you weren't really 
racing. You were just kind of there and you were very upset, a bunch of first round losses. Yep. You could see the frustration on your face. This race was just a totally different situation. Absolutely. I came in here with a better attitude. You know, I, I was, um, you know, mentally stressed, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm a racer and I want to win and uh, I may, maybe showed too many of my colors. So, uh, Definitely had a better attitude coming in here. We had a very successful test, which gave me some confidence, and uh, you know, I had a couple of talks with the teams, and you know, we all have each other's back over here, and it showed today. No, oh, it was amazing, and uh, to see Ron Tobler, you know, I'm buddies with Ron. To see him, knowing the story, how he came out of retirement, your dad, he's leaning on him, he's in the pool. Well, maybe you were so proud. He's like an uncle in many ways. Yeah. Joe Barlam too, and to go through some really tough times and out a win together. Absolutely, you know, uh, there's highs and lows in racing, and if you can't deal with the lows, um, you know, you're never gonna get to the highs. So uh, we got through it all together, and it's really cool to win with Ron and Joe, and uh, my brother Thomas, who he's working on this race car. I think I haven't won with him, I think, since 2014 racing circle track. So uh, we've been dreaming of this to do that together, and I'm glad we got it done. This whole team's like family to me, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. Tell me about the pedal fest. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. You know, there, there's nothing better than pedaling one of these race cars, especially when you come out on the winning end of it. Obviously, you don't want to smoke the tires, but you, you don't really get a lot of chances to practice that craft because in testing, you know, there's a chance you can really wound some parts um, being on and off the gas. But uh, I pulled a little Mike Dunn action out of my pocket this morning and uh, used the brake for the first time. So I was driving one-handed uh, all the way down the racetrack, essentially. So uh, it obviously worked. You know, he was one of the best at it, and uh, now I know why he did it. That's some old school stuff you just revealed right there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, I've been wanting to try it, so I was really uh, proud of myself for, you know, it, it was almost just instinct. It's really hard to get your hand off the wheel in one of these things, and uh, it just worked out perfectly. So uh, kudos to Mike, and uh, he, he scored me that round win. Wow. Well, hey, Daryl Gwynn used to do pull the brake as well, yeah. but... Uh, bottom line, all right, championship, like you're sixth now, you're in it. Yep. All these things that have happened to this point, they're all gone. You have a very legitimate shot. Yeah, you know, that's one nice thing about the playoff system. You know, we're on the good end of the stick on this deal this year. You know, you can be on the bad end, but, uh, you know, we, we caught a break. You know, the point's resetting, and uh, we're right back in the fight. You know, we went and win, won this deal, and if we keep up our performance like we had today, uh, there's no reason why we can't get this Montana brand Rocky Mountain Twist car in the winner's circle and uh, again and uh, end up with the championship. All right, we're going to let you go celebrate. Austin, thank you so much. Thank you. There he goes, Austin Prock after winning top fuel with Ron Tobler and Joe Barlam. And I was so happy for those guys. I was happy for them all because they had been, you know, dealing with a challenging situation. And plus now we get to say Silver Stallions over again. Finally, like the Silver Stallions, it took them 17 races. Is that a long time or is that not really that long at all? After the big test out there at Indy. All right, we got one with Tim Wilkerson also, but we're going to save that for after we hear from Alan Reinhardt because these guys won the race. Uh, you'll hear from Tim. Of course, hopefully everybody share the show. I see there's a bunch of comments out there. We got to get some Reinhardt, though. What's up, AR? Welcome. How are you? Sorry you had to wait so long. Obviously, I told you 15 after. It turns out it's 30 minutes in. I had no idea that those interviews would go so long. My apologies. Yeah, no worries. I was just uh, hanging out listening along with the rest of the world. How's everything on your side of the planet? happy good i am getting ready you know i'm so excited we get to go racing again right just like that boom we're going to charlotte yeah i'm uh headed out to actually i go to phoenix tomorrow and then flying out first thing thursday morning but yeah i'm looking forward to uh to getting back out there and trying again so it's I, I just like being busy so having you know this string of races in a row i don't have a weekend off till after pomona and i'm grateful for that i agree with you i like being busy i love the weekend and it's hard to convey for everyone. I don't know how the drivers feel. Probably what I'm about to say times a multiple of 10, of 100, of 1,000. But there's so much adrenaline. You're dealing with all these people. You're in, you're out. You're taking care of stuff. You're trying to be at your best. And then it stops. Put on the brakes. And uh, there's a little bit of a letdown, at least for me. Like, wow, it's over. Sadness. Fortunately, we get to go again real soon. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the drivers, I think, just love it. The crew guys will get to the point where it's like, okay, we need to take a day off. We need to take a weekend off. We need to go, like, kind of regroup and relax and kind of restock the trailer. But, yeah, I think that the drivers, if you'd let them, they would race five days a week. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's break down some of this race. Uh, let's start off with Top Fuel with Austin Proc. That's a team that, as 
analysis occurred over the course of the season. Like, what's wrong? What's going on? Brittany's running so well. They run them differently. There's just a million things. Relatively new. Just so many storylines. And they were feeling it. They were feeling the intensity. You could see it on Austin's face. They went out and had a test at Indy. They found something, worked it out. Who knows? But they were able to go out there and not only win, but win in, with a strong performance every round. Yeah, I was there at Indy when they made the last run last week, and the last run they made was a 369. And I'm thinking to myself, they have not done that in a while. So, uh, you know, didn't really deep do a deep dive into exactly what they were working on, but something they obviously had found, figured out. Uh, they had a better car this week than they've had, and not just because it got the winter circle, but because it was running better. You know, they've been a mid-pack-ish car for the last five, six, eight races, and they certainly are not that this last weekend. They had a car that could perform with just about anybody out there on the property and, and was running with the big dogs when they showed it. Absolutely. Uh, Brittany Force, the number one qualifier, final qualifying session, but having some struggles. Uh, the car wasn't running the way it has run most of the year, as in flawlessly, uh, kicking out some gaskets. You had referenced a fuel system issue. She had a bit of a, a moment, right? Like that was a big explosion, oil under the tire. The car went to went sideways, creating a great visual for those watching on NHRA on Fox. But uh, an unfortunate out for Brittany allows Justin Ashley, who went to the final round, to take over the points lead. How do we look at this? Is this a, you know, terrible moment for the team, or is this a tough moment managed pretty well by Britt? Are we still there? Yeah. I think that everybody's going to have... I think everybody's going to have a bad race. If you can go six in a row without having one, then okay, you're Steve Torrance. But uh, other than that time that year, I don't think you can get through the six race run without having one bad race. And if I'm Brittany, and if I'm David, and if I'm Max Evans, and I, I'm looking at this going, okay, that's our one bad race. Let's just put it aside and move on. Um, you know, they smoked the tires Friday night. Last one down the racetrack. Okay, they're taking a swing at it. Didn't work. They came back Saturday, and the fuel system completely malfunctioned. They burned the thing up, and it, you know, just kind of like labored its way down the racetrack. Then they came out on the second qualifying session on Saturday, Q3, and even though it shoved the head gasket out of it, it went low ET at the event. And my thought is, okay, they're back, right? They, they know what happened the first time. They know what happened the second time. They fixed it. No problem. Uh, and then it looked like they just had a mechanical in round two because that wasn't, from my seat anyway, I didn't see anything that would make me believe there was any kind of like they missed a call, they were dead a bad tune up, they had a, something mechanical broke. And on the cars like, you know, these cars, stuff like that's going to happen once in a while. If I'm them, I'm saying to myself, okay, that's our one bad countdown race. Just put it away and let's go win the next five. And uh, I still, I still believe that they are the favorite to win the championship. I don't think they're a favorite by this much. I think they're a favorite by this much, but I do still think they're the favorite. Top fuel points, Justin Ashley leads Brittany by nine, by Mike, Mike Salinas by 10, Antron by 54, Torrance is 56 back, Austin 74 back, Josh Hart 87 back, Doug Coletta 107 back along with Leah, Langdon 118 back, Clay 124 back, Tony Schumacher 138 back. And just the fact that Austin was able to crawl from, uh, you know, 12th or so way back there all the way up to sixth in one race. I think that illustrates a good discussion point about the what has been called the participation trophy by Austin. Like, we didn't earn it, but we're getting it, and we're going to make the most of it. You could easily see someone saying, look, this is why we do it, right? He's got a shot to win the championship. They showed up at every race. They worked on everything. They had a tough go of it, and now they got it right, and they're trying to show it in the most critical of times. Yeah, I don't, you know, I'm still not the world's biggest fan of that rule. I would rather see it cut off, it, whether it's 10, whether it's 12, whether whatever you wanted to do. But I would rather see it cut off someplace uh, going into the countdown to the championship. But I'm not the guy that makes those rules. I understand why they did it originally when we were coming out of COVID. And we legitimately didn't know if we were going to run 13 races this year or 18 races this year or 21 races this year. And so trying to encourage people to go to every race, I completely understand that. I'm not sure that it's necessary anymore, but I'm not the one that makes that decision. And if I'm in Austin's position, you know what? I didn't make the rules. They made the rules. And now I'm going to try to take advantage of it. And we'll have to see if they can keep that momentum going. If they can string a couple more great races together, I think then they're, they're in the championship. But I also think, you know, the other side, Mike Salinas had a complete throwaway weekend. Yeah. 
but yet didn't lose any ground, right? He made it to the semis. He did, and if that's his throwaway weekend in the countdown, and he legitimately didn't lose any round, any ground, then you know, I think if I'm Mike Salinas and those guys, I'm going. You know what? We'll take it because you know the old story, right? We got a lot more than we paid for. They ended up with a lot more than they deserved by their Sunday performance. So again, put it behind you. Go to Charlotte. Start all over again, knowing that you had a throwaway weekend, but you didn't lose any ground. Gained ground. They okay. gained. They gained. They gained. They cut the lead in half. They half the lead. They're down ten points out of the lead. They were twenty out of the lead. Um, and he, I talked to Mike. He laughed. He was uh, over there hanging with Joey Gladstone, congratulating Joey. And he's like, you know, we had a tough weekend, but we gained points. And he, yeah. he had a really great attitude about it. And so, well, it's who you race. And we're going to talk about it as we talk about Funny Car. The right people ran the right people setting up these incredible matchups. And, uh, you know, Robert Hike goes on to the win. But Tasca runs Hagen. In the second round, Hagen beats him. Robert runs Hagen, beats him. Other side of the ladder, you've got Caps running Wilkerson. Wilk beats him. And suddenly the right things happen for Robert to extend his lead. But you think that it'll all work out in the end. Like everyone's going to have to deal with that situation. If Hagen and Tasca run each other, you know, six times, they'll, they'll probably split them. Well, I think if you ask... Hagen and Tasca, would you like to do that every week? They'd say yes, because, you know, I would rather, if you're the guy I'm racing for the championship, I'd rather race you in the first round than in the final round if I have my choice. I'd like that lane choice, but, you know. But the whole thing is, if I beat you in the final round, okay, I gain 20 points. But if I beat you in the first round, I might gain 80. And I would rather have that on my shoulders. I, I'd rather, you know, be in charge of my own destiny. If I can't get it done, then I don't deserve it. And I think both of them feel the same way. And the fact that, you know, all three of those that you mentioned, plus Robert, were on the same side of the ladder, that's one of those deals. And I guarantee you, every one of them woke up in the morning, looked at the ladder and said, okay, if I do my job, this is a big day for me because I don't have to sit here going, gee, I hope somebody beats that guy. I can do it myself. And the only one that wasn't on that side of the ladder of the, of the big four is Caps. And he ended up with an early exit anyway. So that, you know, leaves the door open for whoever can capitalize. And the, the whoever was obviously Robert. You know, there was a time in the middle of the summer where Bob Tasca had the most success on track, no question about it. But remember what Robert Hyde has done all year long. And remember now that we're not going to 130-degree racetracks. We're not going to, you know, 100-degree days for the most part. And Tasca needs to be able to transfer the performance that they had in the summer into some cooler conditions. I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying they need to show me they can. Well, exactly. And uh, Robert goes out there, gets it done, and who knows what will happen. Caps, he said flat out, he thought it was going to make it, and then it just peeled him loose and came up a little bit short, had been having a great year against Wilkerson. Wilkerson fought back, gets to the final. Hellacious fire, Alan. That thing was crazy. Everybody out there, uh, I do have an interview with Wilkerson. I am going to play it after uh, we part ways with Alan here. But uh, does, he know, does he know yet what broke when you talked to him? Did he, had he done the uh, autopsy yet? I don't think so. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to remember, and I don't recall him saying that because he spent most of the interview thanking all the teams that showed up, and he was very critical sure. of himself because he felt terrible that everybody showed up to help him. They all dove in, they helped him, and he felt like he let him down with the red light, and he just was very self-critical. And he talks about his 24-hour rule, which I agree with. Um, but wow, like the drama, it felt so intense. This isn't just cars going down a racetrack, right? Like, look at the blue and how fast. Wow, isn't it loud? Let's go home. This is professionals, motorsports, and Tim Wilkerson helped himself on that weekend, right? He, he didn't win, but he gained a lot of ground. He did, and, you know, I think he probably gained some fans as well, being able to come back from that and make the turnaround and make it for the final. I hate the fact that it didn't get seen on the Fox Broadcast Network simply because we ran out of time, but, uh, you know, I think that, Tim has had a good car. Tim was in the championship chase, what was it, five years ago, six years ago, ended up uh, getting nudged out by Cruz down at the end of the, of the season. But, uh, you know, he's got a car that from time to time can run the numbers with anybody. What he needs to do, and I'm not saying anything he wouldn't tell you, is do more of that, especially in qualifying. Be aggressive enough that you don't look at the ladder first round and go, okay, I've got to run Robert, or I've got to run Hagen, or I've got to run Castle. Get yourself up in the top four or five, which doesn't guarantee you an easy draw by any means, 
but at least it puts you in a more favorable position. And Robert said it in his interview a moment ago. If you guys are just signing on, you can go back and check it out or listen audio only on the podcast feed. He wants to avoid those crazy stress runs at the end of the year where it's everything on the line. So we'll just uh, see how it all works out. But what a great day of funny car racing. Points, Robert, by 81 over Hagen, by 84 over Ron Caps, by 97 over John Forrest, who definitely helped himself out as well with a big with a good day, a good day. Uh, Bob Tasca, 106 back. Wilk, 122 back. JR, 130 back. Cruz Pedregon, 152 back. Alexis, 163 back. Jim Campbell, 203. Blake wasn't even there because, you know, they're in Italia hanging out, uh, sipping a cappuccino or so. But they'll be back out this week, Jim Head and those guys. Just, yeah, let's add another good car to the mix. Yeah, I don't know that Blake went on the trip. I know that Jim Head went on the Blake trip. Not that's on the trip. Jim Head went on the trip. Blake was that's that's why the car wasn't there. But so you know, they basically took their own mulligan if they really want to be contenders in the championship. Uh, can they come from where they are now and win it? Mm, man, I don't know. Can they come from where they are now and end up maybe in the fifth or sixth spot? I think that that's a legitimate goal. Uh, you know, Jim Head's team certainly they can perform with anybody. And again, kind of like Temp, they just don't string five, six, seven good runs together like some of the other teams do, and that's something that uh, they need to do if they want to make a big move up into, uh, you know, see how far they can get up into the top ten. Right, exactly. And, and what you just said, like, I think about that, right? Like, um, Blake Alexander is 225 points behind Robert Height with five races remaining. So what would have to happen for Blake Alexander to win the championship? Right. I, you know, we'd have to calculate that mathematically if he won five races – could Robert and Matt and, jo and, Ro and Ron and John and all those guys lose early enough to make it even mathematically possible? Like, I don't know. Someone well, else is going to have to. I mean, could they? Sure. If everybody else goes out first round, but he's going to have to pick up 45 points a race. And that means probably pick up some points in qualifying. The problem with that is how often does Robert not get points? You know, how often does Matt not get points? They don't get them every run, but I bet they get them 70% of the time when they're going down the racetrack. And then the fact that you've got so many people to catch, okay? If Robert all of a sudden goes into the tank, which nobody expects, all right, well, great, I can catch Robert. But do you also think Hagen's going to go in the tank? Do you also think Caps is going to go in the tank? You can't, you know, if I'm chasing you, all I need you to do is stub your toe, and I've got a chance to make up some ground. But if I'm chasing six people, the chances that six people stub their toe all at the same time are very, very small. So I think if I am Blake or if I'm Jim and if I'm that team, I'm thinking let's battle our butts off and see if we can make it top five maybe. But I, you know, I, the championship is not mathematically out of reach, but I think realistically um, I, I just don't think you can come back from that far down with that few races left. Even if he won them all, if he raced Robert in the final every week, he still wouldn't win the championship. So that's the kind of hole they've dug themselves. Right. Uh, well, by not showing up, and that's a choice. It's not like they performed badly. Like Jim had this, he's got a different attitude about racing. It's not, it's professional motorsports because he can be there. But Jim has got this amazing life, and he planned a trip to Italy, and it's like, wow, we made the countdown bonus, but I'm not going to cancel my trip. I'm going to go and, and do this, and we'll race with five. He goes, he's, we spotted him four races in the regular season, too, and they made it. And so um, they got a fast hot rod. I think they're going to be trouble for others out there. Any final thoughts on the nitro categories before we move on to the uh, naturally aspirated? No, just that it was fun racing. Uh, you know, like I put on Twitter, if somebody was there for the first time and you didn't think that was cool, I mean, we had great performances. We had wins by an eyelash. We had Tim Wilkerson having his issue. We had Pedal Fest. We had a little bit of everything you can see out there. And uh, I just thought it was a great day of nitro racing. Yeah, top to bottom. Top to bottom. Okay, and, and let's take a second before we move on to Pro Stock. House of Chaos. Maple Grove, the updates, the changes, the energy, the chaos, the family uh, out there. Like, I felt connected to it, Alan, like I was doing something for my family. I know I wasn't, but we always talk about drag racing as this extended family. Everything I did this weekend, I felt like I was a representative of Kyle Koretsky and Kenny and Kenny Jr. and Taylor. Like, if I was doing a customer service moment or directing someone, like I felt a responsibility after having looked around at how much they had invested in trying to make things as perfect as possible. And um, I got so much positive feedback from the fans. Well, you know, they've done a lot and they've only been there five months. They have a five-year plan. So 
just sit back and watch the stuff that's coming. And Kenny, for being such a hands-on guy, throughout the course of the weekend, Kenny at one time was helping get cars in and get them parked. Kenny at one time, I saw him one time standing, walking down the side of the racetrack, just picking up little scraps of paper that might blow onto the track and cause a problem, or if it didn't make the place look good. I had numerous fans say, I can't believe Kenny Koretsky was the guy in there that was replacing the hand towels in the bathroom, because he wanted to make sure everything that he could do for his customers was getting done. And if he saw something that needed done, it wasn't like, hey, call Joe and tell him to go get this. It was, let me just fix it. I'm here. Let me just fix it. And I also thought what might have been the coolest thing all weekend was the plane with the banner flying over the racetrack that said, thank you, race fans from the Koretsky family. When they went through all of this, spent a ton of money, all of the hours, all of the sweat equity, all of the everything, and yet they still wanted to thank the fans when every fan that I talked to went, wow, I can't believe what they've done with the place. So, um, you know, I think I think it's going to be a great partnership. I think, you know, Koretsky is going to continue to try to do, and by, I mean the family, I don't mean just one of them. I yeah. think that they are going to continue to try to do what they can, kind of in the Bill Bader fashion, to make sure people that come to my racetrack have a good time, they enjoy themselves, and they want to come back. And I think the fans are going to have the realization that this is a track that we need to support, not just when the Pet Boys Nationals are in town, but when there's when the no prep kings are in town, when the division races are in town, maybe just go out on a Saturday and run your car. Uh, they've got a number of other things they're going to do from, you know, camping events to concert events to show uh, car show events to various. And I think that the fans have uh, got a little bit, a little bit more pride maybe in their racetrack to go out and support now. And that's what they need to do. If you want to keep it being a racetrack, you know, Kenny's made no bones about the fact that he loves racing. He loves it. He's going to do, but it is a business. And so he's doing everything he can to make it a good experience when the fans come out. The fans need to come out and support. And this weekend, they certainly did. The psychology behind it, we could go very deep. I know there are some people who are like, why are the Koretskis getting so much appreciation for this? You know, there's other track operators. The fact is this, like a coat of paint can change a lot of attitudes because you go out there and you look around and there you think they're investing here. Maybe I will build a race car. Oh, they're not investing here. Hmm, how long is this thing going to be around? Maybe I shouldn't bother. It's as simple as that. And the fans looking at the stripes in the staging lanes, looking at the paint on the walls, inside the suites, the amazing. They just updated the suites. Uh, it's, it's not like, you know, granite and glass. and it, It's just clean and really nice and a perfect place to watch a race. It's as simple as that. And I think that that lesson, that lesson can be applied to a lot of other places that you don't need to totally tear down your facility and build a new multi-million dollar uh, building. You can just pressure clean and clean it up and make it nice and people will appreciate it. And that's what I heard from literally tens of fans. You know, I can't say that I had hundreds of conversations. Tens of people came up and said that to me and um, they were pretty much in unison, happiness. Well, and I think you hit the nail on the head. They're, you know, they see that they're making an investment. They see that they're trying to make improvements. Uh, he's got some really, really long-term big plans to redo some of uh, some of the drainage issues that we had. So hopefully, going forward, because we all know we're not going to have four days of sunshine at Maple Grove every time we go. There. Yeah, exactly. But can he? And he's in the business, right? Can he engineer a system so that, okay, when it rains, the parking lots don't get flooded. You don't get stuck in the mud. You don't get, you know, yes, you're going to get wet. But instead of turning some of the pit area into a mud bog, can we just turn it into a wet pit area? And all kinds of things like that are things that he and the family are looking at. But I walk into stadiums all the time and to think about, you know, I, I really think of everything as a stadium. You know, if I walk into a drag racing stadium and... There's, I don't know, paper towels on the floor or the paint is peeling off the walls. or the, And I think to myself, you know, that wasn't what it looked like when I went to a Bruton Smith racetrack. That wasn't what it looked like when I went to the last time I went to a Cardinals game. That wasn't what, and the fans that we're trying to get to come buy tickets are the fans that are going to go watch pro football, pro baseball, pro basketball. In some cases, some are, you know, locked into one sport. But I think they need to see our stadiums on par with the other big league sports in in order to start thinking about us like that. You know, a ticket to come to a national event ain't 10 bucks. Right. So you need to make sure that when the pe people come in, that they feel like this is a nice 
facility. And it doesn't have to be the shiniest, newest, but it needs to be clean. It needs to be decent. And you need to have, you know, maintenance take care of stuff. If something breaks, get it fixed. And I think the suite holders, that even goes more so. If I've made the investment to buy a suite and I'm going to bring out my customers, my VIP people, the stuff from my business, I don't want them to walk into a bathroom that doesn't have a light that works or that, you know, I want them to come out and realize they are part of a nice experience in a nice, clean, professionally run stadium. And that's one of the first things Kenny did. I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know if you ever set foot in one of them, but the public bathrooms on the property had all been completely redone. And again, it was like the suites. Was it the fanciest bathroom you've ever been? No. But the floor was clean. All the fixtures were clean. Everything worked. Everything was nice. The paint was good. The lights worked. Because that's the kind of thing that fans, and especially female fans, remember, right? Yes. I mean, for the most part, a guy can, you know, I right, we'll just dash into the Port of John and do what we got to do. And we're in and out of there in 30 seconds and who cares? But if you're going to take your lady friend or your significant other or maybe the the female with got the money and makes the decisions, that's not where you want her to have to go. You want her to have a clean, decent, well-lit, nice place to go take care of her business, and that's an important thing. Yeah, that's the Joe uh, plan for a long time. You could double your fan base if women feel comfortable uh, out there coming out and enjoying racing in so many places that they just don't. You know, they got to walk through an inch of water to get in there, and they're like, I'm never coming here again. Sorry, it's really cool, but I just can't do my thing. Um, that's the easiest way is to make the ladies feel great. They did a great job. I did not go into the public restroom, though. I'm glad you did, and uh, you got to see it and share it with the WFO universe. All right, let's talk pro stock. Erica Anders. Erica Anders, right? Bo Butner was the number one qualifier. Guy went super gas, back-to-back -back events. Guy's on rails in super gas. It's amazing. Erica goes through Alan Przinsky, Hartford, uh, Kyle, who had a great day on the track as well. But Erica mm -hmm. was just really tough and my analysis was whatever they had working for them down low, their 60 foot times. I'm seeing 960, 60 foot, it's out of that car. And it was one of the only ones. And they just ran through them and E does what she has been doing. Mean E, seven wins on the season, one for one in the countdown. Yeah, she definitely had the best car, even though she ended up qualifying second. That Friday night run was gonna set the field and Bo uh, nipped her a few thou there or a hundredth or whatever it was. But the rest of the weekend, she had the best car, and oftentimes by a large margin. And the thing with Erica is, if you put her in a car that's not perfect, she's very capable of making up the difference. If you put her in a car that is perfect, she very rarely makes a mistake in order to give it back. And, you know, have there been times when somebody comes up those double O against her? Absolutely. But you're gonna, that's what you're going to have to do, because she's not going to be 60 on the tree. She's going to be 20 or 22 and, you know, take a swing. And for the most part, she had a car that if she was 20 on the tree, it didn't matter what you did. You could be perfect. You still weren't going to outrun her because she had that much of uh, that. She had that much of an advantage over the field for most of it. Now, you know, can they keep it going? I guess we'll all find out. But they've had kind of like Robert. They have had the best car all year long. There have been a couple of others that had a pretty good car here and there. You know, Troy Coughlin had a pretty good car for a couple of races. Aaron Stanfield had a pretty good car a few races earlier in the year. But on a consistent basis from February to today, nobody has had a better car than Erica. Yeah, and uh, they, we'll, we'll see how it goes. She's excited about racing again. The points, Erica by 81 over Greg, by 88 over Kyle, by 90 over Troy, 91 over Aaron. 118 over Dallas, Hartford 162 back, Mason 164 back, Bo 172 back, Camry 173 back, Quadra 193 back, 214, 223, 233 for Christian and Chris McGahey, and then Fernando Sr. 244 back. Those guys are in it. They're fighting for a top 10 spot amongst themselves. But really, uh, the thing about Pro Stock, though, that double O light great run get cut down in the first round because you ran the wrong person, that can happen. It can happen. So mm -hmm. she's going to go through the exercise, and we'll see how it all works. But Erica Anders in 2022 has been the class of the field. She certainly has. And, you know, they could catch their breath, and then uh, we'll see them again in a couple weeks. Yes, exactly. All right. And Pro Stock Motorcycle now. Joey Gladstone. I told Joey, and I've been saying for a while, even previous to his, uh, previous to his success, that I felt like the kid has it – right? Like the star power, maybe it's the locks or the attitude or something or his positive energy. Like, I don't know, but I feel like he's got it. And 
he is winning races. He went toe to toe with Matt Smith, beat Matt Smith for the first time on Smith's V twin. And then goes on Mark Ingerson, by the way, great job by those guys, but goes to the final round, puts up a 12 reaction time, takes down Angie, who also had a great race for herself, but that's a 29 point lead for Joey Gladstone and Joey and Corey and big Dave. And that team of like rap scallions, they, uh, they're going to make a run at this. And I think it's pretty exciting. I think so too. I think, uh, you know, it'll be real interesting to see now which bike Matt brings out next, because he said right here last week that he was going to run the Buell in, in Reading because he was more comfortable with it. But then he had time off and he believes the Suzuki will be faster. And I think Joey Gladstone is showing him the Suzuki can be faster, even though they're going to have, you know, different engine platforms. Obviously, Matt Smith runs the monster stuff and Joey runs the Vance and Hines stuff. But I think Joey is living proof that if you've got it right, the Suzuki is capable of going faster. So that's going to have Matt Smith working pretty hard in the next couple of weeks before we see the bikes out there again. It's going to be fun, though. I mean, I, I enjoy from doing my job, and I think the fans enjoy watching a battle, not a runaway. And so, you know, if Matt Smith goes out there and wins, you know, four races in the countdown, you get to, you know, Vegas and Pomona, and most of the fans are going, hmm. but if there's something to talk about, and especially if they're chirping at each other a little bit, that really gets the fans engaged for when the bikes come to the starting line now, I've got my favorite, and I want to see who wins this. Yeah, well, m multiple layers. Look, I think uh, Bobby Lagana. He's the guy who put it out there, and that's why I appreciate Bobby. Is you know some will try to diminish this playoff system, right? Like we, hey, we're trying to get excited. I, I always try to get people excited about what we're here. Maple Grove fans, it's not just fast, loud cars going down a track that you can watch and be amazed. That's certainly part of it, but these are people, competitors, putting their life into this, and now. This is an elevated level of pressure. This is a playoff. Everybody knows the playoffs. The Eagle fans, when their team goes to the playoffs, they're feeling a different feeling than they do in game four. It's just the way it is, the way it's supposed to be, and the way American sport has worked. You cannot like the countdown. You can like the count of Bobby Lagana. Everybody is nutted up. Ugh, feeling it. That's what we wanted. That's what we got. Some racers are going to handle it better than others. Some racers are going to handle it good in one race, better in another race. But you get to watch your favorite deal with this very difficult situation. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. That's what the playoffs are all about. Robert Hyde, I don't want to go through that. He's having PTSD already about that run. Like I would rather separate myself and pull away early. Sure. That's what's entertaining. That's the entertainment. Cars going down the track, fast and loud, pretty, cool. Look at that. Zoom. Awesome. That's only one layer of professional drag racing. And I think we've done, you know, we can always do a better job of telling that story because that's what hooks in the sports fan, not just the car fan. Yeah, I think so. And that, But, I, you know, I'm with Robert. If I could have a free race lead by the time we get to Vegas, then give me that. I'll uh, sign me up for that every time. Yeah, Capto style. Sweep it. Sure. But, you know, the fans like to see runs that mean something. And when it's Tasca and Hagen, whether it's second round or whatever, when, you know, when Robert and Ron get head to head, that means something. And all the fans get involved. And Joey, even though he's one of the newer faces out there in the pro stock motorcycle ranks, he's really taking it to the old guard right now. I mean, he's young and he's cocky is not the right word, but he's got, you know, just enough attitude and he's, he's certainly outspoken and and he's taking it to the old guard right now. And I think that's great. You know, if you are a Matt Smith fan, if you're a Vance and Hines fan, if you're a Steve Johnson fan, if you're a Jerry Savoie fan, all right, you know, show this punk what it's like, you know, you guys that have been here for so long. And if you're not, then it's like, hey, isn't this fun that this, you know, young kid with a little bit of attitude, a lot of skill is coming in here and just wrecking the place. And it's just fun to watch. Yeah, brash. I think brash is a good word to describe describe uh, Joey. But uh, we'll let it go. We'll let it, we'll let's see how it all plays out. Great. How many, how many people? By the way, how many people do you think looking at Joey Gladstone and just seeing you know the look and the attitude and the stuff over the last three races thought, yeah, that's a guy that's probably going to carry his two year old girl into the winter circle because it's her birthday. Wasn't that like wow? That's kind of a different Joey. I see. I always uh, I get what you're saying. But the guy is, you know, heart of gold kind of character. Sure. 
And to me, being a softy as a, you know, daddy's daddy's girl or, or however say a girl's dad, um, I could have predicted that. And he was so excited. He wrote happy birthday, Olivia, two days in a row. Why? Just wanted to get her a little extra airtime is what he told me. Yeah. And he literally carried her in his arm up into the into the winter when I did the interview with him down on the racetrack. And so that was just, I thought it was a really cool moment. You know, you look at this guy, you know, tough guy, wears leather, races motorcycles, da, da, da. Oh, look at my little girl here. I thought that was really cool. Exactly. So the bike's going to be off at the Betway Carolina Nationals, um, but going to be very interesting to say the least. Any final thoughts about Pro Stock or Pro Stock Motorcycle before we move forward? Now, just bring on the next race. I'm ready. Time to let that already. Bring on the next race. Jeff Beal won top alcohol dragster. DJ Cox ran the same ET, 544-2. What, every time down the racetrack? Was that what happened? What did we witness, Alan? That was the most consistent performance ever? That's insanity. Well, he did the exact same every every run down the racetrack in qualifying. He wasn't quite that consistent when he got into the race, but he was in the 540s the whole time. Beat Sean Bellamere in the final round. That's a, uh, that's a pretty good day at the office. Now, if you follow the alcohol cars on the regional trail, he's been tearing it up back there in the eastern region. So anybody that follows the class closely, I don't believe was real surprised at the performance because the car's been hauling ass, and he's been doing a really nice job with it. But uh, there was a whole lot of 40 players there. I was with, you know, the uh, – I just locked up. Uh, Dolph Leanders. Dolph Leanders, yeah. But <laughs> he was there. He was running very well. Uh, you know, Bellamere being there, running very well. Uh, conspicuously absent, obviously, you know, Doug Coletta, or Doug uh, Gordon. And, you know, I was surprised that Shane Westerfield didn't go there. with uh, as, well, as well as his car had been running earlier in the year, I figured, man, let's keep the momentum going, right? Just load it up and head for the next one. But uh, apparently they're going to regroup a little bit and then uh, jump back on the bandwagon a little bit later on. Great to see Jeff Veal get a win for our fans north of the border. Comp eliminator Ken Voigt would have loved to see uh, Ken, you know, have to race, but it didn't work out listening to the sound of that starter on uh, Jay Schoenberger's machine. I don't know what was going on in there, but it sounded like a box of marbles, right? Just kind of grinding along. Uh, Roger Reese in Superstock, Katie Sapanek in Stock Eliminator. I was watching Katie's lights throughout the weekend. She was on it, absolutely on it. Donald Bangs in Super Comp, congratulations, Don. Bo Butner in Super Gas, spend a second talking about Bo. Winning the U.S. Nationals in Maple Grove in Super Gas back-to-back, whatever it is, 15 straight rounds. It's hard to win 15 straight rounds in Super Gas. It is, and uh, but he's just having fun, and you know it gives him something to do while he's waiting for the next round of pro stock. I think that's, you know, Bo goes racing to have fun, and it's obviously more fun when you're winning. But uh, you know he's got good equipment, he's got plenty of ability to win number what thirty six or something, I think, across four or five classes. So uh, you know he's just a guy that you know jump in anything and, and have at it. In the conversation for the world championship, it's a question of is there enough for divisional races for him to hit. Uh, to make it up. Vonnie Mills in Top Sportsman with her new paint job wins best appearing. Vonnie goes out there and gets her first win since the 1990 Gator Nationals. Amazing. David Barton in Factory Stock Showdown. This is one. Like, you know, we don't want to say he, he has not clinched the championship mathematically, but if he is able to find a way to show up at the stampede of speed and attempt a qualifying session, then he will. Yeah, I like I like his chances of locking it up right now. And I thought it was also interesting, you know, he spoke to Amanda at the top end of the racetrack since we didn't get to do our parade of champions, but we did get to hear from everybody. And he said, basically, Aaron Stanfield has been kicking my butt for two years. I'm glad to finally be on the other side of that a little bit. Uh, you know, a little bit of rivalry there, obviously, between not just the drivers, but the engine builders as well. So it looks like uh, Barton's going to have the number one on the side of his car again next year. And we'll just continue on. But he's had a, he's had a very, very good car the second half of the season. And Paige Ketterer wins the junior shootout, which was really cool. Those young people about to age out gets a huge win. Super emotional. Loved it. Loved seeing young people fulfill their dreams. Well, her last run, she uh, she said she's 18 years old, and so she's aging out of the program, but she did qualify to get to come out and be a part of the shootout. And whoever's idea that was, and I'm not sure if it was Bug Bite or somebody else, but I think that uh, you know they deserve a bonus or a, you know an ice cream cone or something. Because we've had the juniors come out to the races, the nationals, for years and make exhibition runs and talk about them and talk about the program. But given them an opportunity to come out and actually run in competition, it's an eight-car field, okay? It doesn't take half the day. But it gives them an opportunity to actually come out, race in competition, and get a trophy. you got to earn your way in, 
And in this particular case, it was the top five in points, and whoever won a, a regional event in May in Division One, that's what you had to do to earn your way in. And then we get to come out and showcase their skills instead of just driving down the racetrack and making practice runs, but to actually showcase the skills and get out there and race. So whoever's idea that was, um, two thumbs Absolutely. up from Reinhardt. 100 percent 100 we had like actual competition to talk about and get to put the kids under you know in that competitive moment it was great uh final thoughts about maple grove or just turn your attention to z max now the betway carolina nationals i always get a little nervous i love the facility i feel like we somehow trained the fans in that region to only appreciate four wide race two of the playoffs it could be a linchpin race or uh, you, you're not going to win the championship but if you're at the bottom of the points and you lose first round or dnq you're pretty much done and i think it's so important anytime we can go to bruton's track this will be the first time without bruton um you know the, so much investment such an appreciation for motorsports yeah the facility itself is, is spectacular there's no doubt about that the surface is great it looks like the weather's going to be pretty good me who never looks at the weather somebody said something yesterday so i looked it's supposed to be like 90 degrees on Thursday and 75 on Friday. Oh, wow. So I'll take the uh, 75 over the 90 every time. If that, if that comes true, then that's going to make it a really fast place. But it uh, should be a fun event. Looking forward to uh, looking forward to getting down to Charlotte and continuing on. So it all works out in the end, right? Because Seattle, it was 100 degrees, and then on Monday it was 75 degrees. And so we, we give and we get. It all works out in the end. Alan, great job as usual. I had such a great time. What an event. So many fans had positive things to say. And uh, we do. We get to do it all again. So go get ready. I'll see you in Charlotte in a couple of days. All right. Looking forward to that. Talk to you soon. There he goes. The voice of the NHRA. Alan Reinhardt joins us each week right here on WFO Radio. All right. I promised everybody the Tim Wilkerson interview. And I will address some other things, I'm sure. I haven't looked at any comments uh, because... You know, we're dealing with like a little internet flare here, like a little, oh man, I should have definitely been looking at the comments because we're getting spammed by bad stuff. Ooh, sorry, guys. I'm not going to put it up on the screen though, but every once in a while, those spammers, right? Those spam, Jalen, what's up? It was great seeing you. Look at this with the Jalen. It's great seeing you. NHRA drag racing is just amazing. So uh, such close racing in all the categories. Jalen, by the way, got an alcohol funny car license. He's trying to. One thing that took me by surprise to hear Ulf Leander's car when he launches, he revs that car up high. Exactly. And that's why I love uh, these alcohol funny cars. Look at this. Michael Phillips was out there. He better. I want to poke the bear. Sorry, Michael. I was going to give you an opportunity. Yeah, Matt Smith, the next two days, testing the next two days with Suzuki. Don't count MSR yet, says Matt. That's Matt. I can figure that out. I didn't go to the comments here, guys, because, man, we had a little sketchy internet situation. I would hate to get kicked off the air in the middle of this very important and vital countdown show. But I will go back and check them all out after, after I run through the people who make it possible and we play that very important Tim Wilkerson interview. You're going to want to hear it. We all love Tim. Like, Tim is universally loved for the most part. I mean, I'd like to meet the guy who doesn't like Wilkerson just to kind of psychoanalyze the deal. Like, so you don't like Wilkerson. Huh? Tell me why. <laughs> Lay it on me uh, because I don't get it. Uh, something else I want to say just because it's it's up here. Whenever I go to Maple Grove, I'm excited to see Frankie Aragona. Frankie wasn't racing this weekend. And, you know, he's got obviously a health situation. And, um, you know, maybe he's out there right now. And, and, and all I talked to so many people, Jackie Frick and many others. And we're all you can be happy and very sad at the same time. And to Frank Aragona and his dad, those people, like they always treat me so great and they're beloved by their fellow racers. And so I just want everybody, if you're out there in the WFO community, like you might not know Frank personally, and there are certainly people who know Frank better than I do, who grew up with him, who spent time with him. But when I see Frank and his dad racing, I think of me and my dad racing and their love and the passion for drag racing is at the highest level. So Whatever you believe, please send a prayer or think positive thoughts or whatever you do for Frankie Aragona. The guy is gold, and um, Frank, we're with you, bud. We're with you as best as we can in this very difficult time. And just um, to talk to racers and comp, you know, they are all feeling it too. Just uh, tough. All right, so here's the deal. Earlier, I mentioned the Stampede of Speed, and I put up a QR code. And the QR code is up in a chat section. Uh, the link is in the chat section. You can just go to the Texas Motorplex website. But here's what you get. Four free tickets for anyone that scans the QR code and fills out the form on the website. They'll get their tickets 
in an email next week. So do it now, guys. The idea is they want to give away tickets to as many non-Texas folks as is possible. So we want people from outside of the state of Texas. Uh, that would be successful in the eyes of the Texas Motorplex and the Stampede of Speed. Uh, they, you don't need to win them. All you do is fill out the form. That's what we're saying. You get four tickets. The tickets are good through Monday through Friday of the event, and the schedule is on the back. So for those of you out there who are interested in the Stampede of Speed or a great event, you're going to get Monday four tickets, four. So you bring three of your friends. You bring your family. I don't need to go through all the iterations of what's possible with those other tickets plus you. But do it. And if you're outside of the state of Texas, that is even better. There's the QR code. They love it because it covers my mug, right? Stampedespeed.com slash SOS tickets. Go to the website and, and get on there. The fastest 10 days in Texas is going to be concerts. Palmer is going to be on there. We're going to be talking about it on the show tomorrow. So definitely get on board with the Stampede of Speed. Marvin Rodak is from Fort Worth, Texas. And this is how I start my day every day. You wonder why I'm caffeinated, right? And Joe's like fired up. The answer is RodaxCoffeeAndGrills.com. And if you're a racer and you wanted to try Rodax Coffee, but you didn't want to go through the whole shipping exercise, maybe while you're down there, 817-924-6821. Give them a call. Tell Marvin you heard it on WFO and be ready to love something new. Rodax Coffee. TorqueCalibrationServices.com.au. For those of you in the various industries that require this in Australia, earth moving, tractors, racing, they cover it all down there. Go to their website, torquecalibrationservices.com.au. Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. Frank was in the house up there in Maple Grove, and they've got a great program called the Dragster Adventure, where they drive around the country or they go around the country with dragsters and enable you to drive them. Make it so easy to experience drag racing. Go to frankhawley.com and check out their program. And I think it's one of the best. And I've had my listeners go on the program and fall in love with drag racing and go buy a bracket car and become a bracket racer. That's what it does. And so do it. Courses start at $399. Remember, the holidays are coming. This makes a great gift. Samtech.edu, the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology, more for a career in engine building, CNC programming, EFI tuning. If you want to work on a race team, they can get you started. Call Brian Massengill personally. Go to samtech.edu. Ask for Brian. Tell him you mentioned you heard it on WFO radio. And kick some tire. See what happens. They'll be at PRI as well. Bernie Speed Shop. Bernie's.com. Over $5 million in inventory for classic muscle cars. If you want to do consignment, sell a car. Plus, they do frame-off restorations. They build trucks. They build trailers. Bernie's.com in Ocala, Florida. And Josh is like, tell him to come by. Tell them to swing by and have a look at our shop. So if you're there, you're going to go to Garlitz Museum. You're about seven minutes away from Bernie's. Seven minutes or seven miles, one or the other. Bernie's.com. Happy birthday, Josh, was yesterday. Phillips-connect.com. Mike Green is going to be our Nitro School host in St. Louis, which is cool. 300 miles an hour. Jim Epler. 300 miles per hour to the eighth mile. He broke that news right here on WFO radio, which is great. But honestly, it's all an exercise that everybody in the transportation industry knows to go to Phillips hyphen connect and get on board with the smart trailer technology. FTI performance transmissions and torque converters. There was a lot of big money bracket racing this weekend and FTI was very successful in a lot of it. Troy Williams and Donovan Williams had great success. In addition to many others go to, you can listen to the ignition podcast for Troy's big money minute, a different Troy. Everybody named Troy is doing well right now in the world. FTIperformance.com. And of course, Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology. Go to Total Seal's website. You can get the podcast there, but you can learn a lot about Ring Seal, their YouTube channel, their Facebook page. There's all kinds of information. If you have an engine builder, you got to make sure that they know about this cutting edge technology. Just because it was good enough back in the day doesn't mean it's good enough any longer. Plus, we've got our WFO store. We encourage you to go to that. And you can become a Patreon. And support WFO Radio. Gosh knows we need support these days. Let's go to Tim Wilkerson after the race. I had just interviewed Austin Proc, and I said to myself, man, everybody is going to want to hear from Wilkerson. The guy went through a raging inferno, went back there. They worked themselves, got it up there. He goes red, an unfortunate moment. Let's see what Wilk had to say. Right, I know my audience, and I know they want to hear from this man, Tim Wilkerson. Tim. 
you went through an old school 1980 style funny car fire what what caused the fire do you know no you know we don't know the thing uh the thing acts, appears like it broke something major early in the run in the valve train because the boost went up way high and, and it when it did that it hydraulic knocked two rods out of it so but uh we'll figure it out you know when we get back home just uh upset with myself for red lighting you know that's just unacceptable driving so i don't know what else to say besides that I apologize to all the teams that helped me and boy them guys i come out of the trailer to start working on my car and i had caps's team and tasca's team and alexis's team and cruz's team and chad green's team and holy moly there had to be 40 people over here so god bless all those guys and i'm sorry i let all you guys down more than anything that was depressing to me as a as a driver yeah i i i can't imagine what that's like we can't imagine what you go through and to be amped up trying to get the car ready and then go up there and stage it up and have to be calm yeah well i you know really that, that's un, not really like me it's not indicative of me i had nice lights all day long i was man i was ready i thought i'm gonna get this done so uh and i swore i've seen it blink but you know how that shit goes so i put said go but you helped yourself out in the points considerably. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we, you know, and that's going to be okay. We still got a good car. I'm not counting myself out. I don't, uh, I don't have the money to do what we did today. But uh, hey, you know we'll uh, we'll go back and uh, get Mr. Levi and, and uh, twist his arm behind his back a little bit, and see if we can uh, get another car out of him. So that's pretty exciting to be do as good as we did because really we were within a hundredth of Robert every run today. So we had something for him, and Jimmy knew that I think. But, yeah. Uh, and I was, I was pretty confident. I really was. I was confident all day long that I was going to be a car to beat. But uh, it would have been a good finals if I could have kept my head on straight. Well, the good news is you get to go again in a few days and yep. get after it. Yeah, nope. I, I, uh, I have a 24-hour rule. After 24 hours, put it all behind you and start over again, win, lose, or draw. And, and uh, you know, as my wife always says, what do you think all the unloved, miserable people were doing today? They weren't drag racing at 330 mile an hour. So I'm happy to be here and thank you for all the fans that came by. I had hundreds of them come by and bless me. Good luck. So uh, believe me, it means a lot to a guy like me. We got, nobody's got more heart than us. Uh, everybody's, probably somebody's got as much, but not more. Thanks. Tim, congratulations. Thank you for spending the time. Thanks, pal. WFO. Awesome. Just awesome. Tim Wilkerson spent a little time after it was all over. And uh, what a great start. What a great start. 10 out of 10, A++ for the Koretsky family who did such a great job with the track and everything that happened. Now, there was kind of a, a one negative moment for me personally, one negative moment. And it is unfortunate, someone who speaks for a living, I say a lot of things. And over at least 10 years of doing this, I have never uh, deliberately said something disrespectful or intended to uh, attack or belittle or diminish and while Friday night, J.R. Todd and John Forrest were on the track, um, I said something that J.R. took very personally and took to social media and kind of, you know, made it the world's uh, situation. And I want to say that I was making a statistical analysis about the championship hopes of the drivers who had made the countdown. And with 15 of 16 races, Going into that event, having been won by four drivers, and then the other race having been won by John Force, uh, I thought of a graphic about those guys, and then I thought about the next group, and I used the word tier. This is the first tier, and this is the guys that are in the second tier, and I put the yellow fellas in that, in that tier. And honestly, never thought second of it, because it was a statistical analysis of their performance to this point. It was definitely not about the quality of their character. It was definitely not quality of their equipment. It was definitely not about their uh, abilities as drivers or crew chiefs. It was about their performance to the point. And really the thing that was you know, most aggravating is the reason I said what I said was to tell the story of a team that is an underdog, but certainly capable of going on and winning a championship. That was the point. They stayed and tested, by the way. The underdog story. Not everyone is just a guy in the chase and trying to win and somebody wins and somebody doesn't win. No, there are favorites. 
Alan Reinhardt called him the big four a little bit earlier. I think that's a great way to say it. With Robert Height now having seven wins, Caps, Hagen, and Tasca each with three wins, Caps with the Pep Boys call out money. And then there's kind of everybody else. John Forrest, he's won a race. He's been to a couple of final rounds. But I know what that team is capable of. And I told the story that if they were to go on and win the championship, they are certainly capable, but they would be doing it from a wild card position. The idea that a wild card football team's quarterback would get mad about being called a wild card when it's just a statement of fact, it's about the numbers. I, I was pretty much surprised by it. I was surprised by it. And to have some people, you know, build upon it. I've done this for 10 years. I've never had a beef with anybody. I've somehow been able to support the sport and support its drivers and speak positively about everyone and especially, especially Connie Coletta. And to have this happen was kind of a shock. And so why am I addressing it? Because I could just let it go and probably should just let it go. Just let it go. Well, Todd Smith is a great friend. Of all the crew chiefs, he's been here. If someone told him that I said they were a second-tier, second-rate team, referring to their character, their ability, or their equipment, it's very important to me that that is uh, pushed back upon, that is stopped, because that is not true. And it was never true. And I feel like after 10 years of talking about drag racing and drag racers every week, multiple times a week, and every year NHRA invites me back to talk more, to do more, put me on the TV show from time to time, I feel like that has been earned by not being controversial, by being respectful, by seeing the best in everybody. And the idea that someone might have gone to Conrad Coletta, a god in racing, and said that Costello said something negative, I got to push back. I got to push back. It had nothing to do with quality of character, quality of equipment, quality of the way they handle it, and zero. It had everything to do with, to this point, this team is not currently grouped with the four teams that have won 15 of the 16 races. Simple as that. So that's how I want to address that. I want to move forward. I am super excited about drag racing. I want to grow our sport. We've got race two of the playoffs. I'm not going to get into some sort of social media beef with someone, with anyone. You can call me. You can come up to me. You can talk to me. You can say, hey, I disagreed with what you said. And by the way, I took it to heart. I ran it up the flagpole. I checked. I went back and listened. I asked a couple of people, hey, what do you think? What do you think about this? And I got overwhelming uh, analysis to the contrary, that, that I said nothing that was not true. And also it was pretty clear, pretty clear that I was trying to tell an underdog story about the team that has the ability and the capability to win the championship, but just not from the favorite position. That was it. And so I'm going to move forward. I'm going to keep making these, uh, you know, to analyze things this way. And I think it's important for our sport because the sport needs to be a sport and not a fun exhibition. A sport needs to be a sport where people are under pressure like athletes. And when things don't go their way, we talk about it, but without malice. And the idea that someone perceived malice, that it was personal. I was talking about them as second rate or second tier. It was, uh, it was mentioned to me, well, you shouldn't have put us in a tier system. Shouldn't put it in a tier system, right? Tier. Well, I could have said the people who have won multiple races and the people who haven't, I guess there's a bunch of ways that I could have said it in the moment that might've been different. I think, I think I said it right. So I stand by what I said and there's ways to change it. It was nothing personal and I will never say anything personal. I've never said anything personal because I love drag racing and drag racers and I'm trying to grow this whole thing. And make those fans in Maple Grove realize what's going on in the first race of the playoffs. And so I'm going to keep going. And so let's get some comments in because I've taken no comments here. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. We had like 80 comments on the show. 
this guy. I guess so early comments. I missed you guys. Sorry. Sorry. I was at Maple Grove on Sunday. Maple Grove is the best track in Pennsylvania. Okay. I don't know. I think Maple Grove is the best track in the Northeastern United States. Right. And no disrespect to anyone. But they just did a great thing there. What's up, guys? I'm starting to warm up uh, an old jelly roll. And I wish I could have seen John Forrest face to face when I came up with old jelly roll and grabbed him fat. And probably, OK, so Michael Phillips is definitely being personal right now. And it's to Reinhardt about Reinhardt being fat. And that's OK, because there's love there. There's love. That's the thing. It's love and mutual respect. There will be more money races next year. And uh, I'm betting on it. They had one this year. Let's see. Great seeing you and talking to both of you at the Grove. Had a great time, except for the 2000 finish. Yeah, Garretson. Garretson got to be on attention in the pits, though. The blind squirrel racing. If you haven't seen it, Chris Garretson is he's one of those personalities where doing that eight-minute bit, you really could see what kind of character he is. And uh, it was good stuff. Maple Grove should partner up with some of the big buck bracket races. I'm sure they will or throw their own. Uh, the place looks so fresh and clean. They did a fantastic job. Uh, build and run it well, and they will come. It's true. Model off Santa Pod, Hockenheim, racing, plus a bunch of other things going on. I think they got it. Yes, Kenny was mowing lawns with the tractor. The place looked great. I'm proud to have been a part of it. I am proud to have been a part of it as well. Mike Firebird. I met Mike Firebird. Hi, Mike. Nice meeting you too, man. Every one of those engagements, like I want to hang out for as long as is possible, but sometimes I got to run out of there. And hopefully I didn't, didn't do that. Sell a pound of ice cream for a buck for 99 cents. And you could undercut somebody. The chaos pit party Friday night was pretty good too. They gave everybody cornhole games right on captain chaos. All of these things. And I'm just looking back. I'm looking back at all these comments. I don't want to go backwards. Yeah, Reinhardt said that Pro Stock was off at uh, Charlotte, but they are running. Adding Maple Grove. Pro Stock Motorcycle is not, which is a bummer. Here we go. Now we're back. We're back caught up. The whole weekend was a massive W for the NHRA. Well done to them. Couldn't find one thing to complain about this weekend. Well, Kid Chaos said it. Like on Saturday, the sellout day, the largest uh, crowd in the history of Maple Grove, according to me, no statistical evidence, just opinion and, and feeling uh, that they really wish that they had gotten the traffic flow in there better. And he took it personal. He, he like he was internalizing it. And guys, like the first time you do anything, it's a challenge. And so they I thought they did so well. I thought they did so well. Overall, the Reading race was just great. Whether 86 sunny here in Charlotte today. Let's go. Let's let's keep it going, though, everybody. Go to Charlotte. Go to the race. Go to the race if you're in the area. Why do we need to put uh, tracks with two races? The second ZMAX race uh, is empty and put it in a market where people would attend. That's a good question. Uh, the answer is where? I think the facility at ZMAX is so great that it's better to try to fill the place. Fill it. Like, we got to fill it. We can do it. I know the NFL has started. Gosh knows the Miami Dolphins with that incredible win. Everybody knows that. That's what everybody's talking about. I think we can find a way to fill the place. We just got to try. We got to keep trying. Look forward to bumping into you this weekend, says David. David, he's one of our Patreons. Thank you, David, for supporting the show. We need a championship uh, before he retires. Great ignition this week. Thank you, Scott. Pickle Rick. Great stuff. Prayers to Frankie Aragona. Now we're caught up. Wilkerson needs a championship before he retires. Thank you, Christopher for putting the person's name he does and maybe it'll be this year who knows great job tim getting the car back to the finals exactly putting on a show we're coming down from colorado tuesday through monday for the stampede of speed awesome get those tickets scan the code the link is up there in the uh, chat section social media fake twitter Brittany, aka fake wow guys on that note i have been followed by a lot of fake drivers lately just fake Britneys and fake Alexis and what's going on. Drag racing is so small to have people posing as people that they're not like, what's going on with that. It just does it. Like there are some things that I just don't understand. And, um, that that's one of them. Great show, Joe and Alan. Oh, there they are. 
block user. It's like adult stuff, guys. Don't. Uh... Maybe I'll run out to Bernie's tomorrow, only 30 minutes away. Do it, Steve Brenwald, who made our shirt, our Nitro uh, Smoke and Fire t-shirt, which is available and selling like wildfire. And Reinhardt mentioned it on the mic at the NHRA. And I was like, oh, man, feeling very uncomfortable about that because that's not why they have me there. But, you know, since he brought it up, it is available. Thank you, Steve, for your efforts as our media art guy. I thought Brittany was talking to me sad. It was fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got excited when Brittany retweeted one of our tweets, too. I got excited. Like, oh, man, Brittany liked WFO. That's cool. Oh, it's the fake Brittany. Oh, well. Congratulations to David Barton and Ray Barton Racing Engine. David Barton is an awesome character. I got to get him. Yeah, you know, I got to talk to him about being on the podcast. But um, let's just let him lock it down. And great driver. Check me on your Facebook, then give me a call, says Gary. Uh, great show, Joe. Chatting with you at Maple Grove. Thank you, Fast Eddie. Yeah, Fast Eddie was awesome. He bought a WFO shirt. Uh, let's see. Go away, spammers. Yeah, it's so tough. You know, we got we to fight spam. There's so many problems in the world, right? Like Wilkes Warriors, and we're worried about dealing with spam. I don't think Wilkie could let anyone down or would ever let anyone down. No, he didn't. In my opinion, you said nothing wrong, and that's how he's been performing. It's still turn around. It can still turn around. That's what I was trying to say, and I did say, and it was received by countless people, and they identified it accurately. It was intended to be the story of an underdog team that has yet to perform so far and is certainly not able to be grouped with Robert Height, Ron Caps, and those guys because they all won multiple races, but that wasn't the story the story was they were capable and they were working hard to get up into that top tier and i said it that way and you know words matter in the versus second tier as in second rate two totally different meetings it was a choice though it was a choice uh countdown trying to get hyped up trying to get amped up trying to create bulletin board material for the guys trying to uh, foxhole mentality. Look, they're against us. Let's show them all of that stuff. The countdown, Bobby Lagana, they're all nutted up. Bobby said that. I don't say that. Steve Torrance, a couple of years ago, got after me a little bit too, for, but in a very nice, much nicer way. And you can't do that to your opponents in drag racing. You're not going to have a fight. So I think that's what this was. It's disappointing, but whatever, move forward. I think Erica is going to sweep the countdown says Blake. Oh man, for anyone to sweep anything in pro stock, that would be insanity. And you're in F1 and you're slow. You get called out of it. Happens just to be part of pro race. Thank you. Drag race central. I appreciate it. But listen, guys, honestly, um, I know some people have wanted to defend me and get in there and everything. It's like, I'm, I'm a track announcer podcaster. There shouldn't even be a discussion here. This shouldn't even be happening. So I appreciate it. But let's just move forward. Let's talk about what's happening. Heard it live. Wasn't construed that way on the air. Oh, see, now I'm getting into the comments of the thing that I said a few minutes ago. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Let's just move forward. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. You know who I thought about? Like, seriously, like, oh, gosh, Michael James. Friend, supporter, wonderful guy, great guy. Has been WFO for years. Was the first person to buy a WFO shirt. Did he think that I, you know, I, of course not. And that's why I'm bringing it up. As much as everybody says, I didn't say anything wrong. And I know what's in my heart. And you'd think 10 years of saying the right thing and never having a beef with anyone would matter at all. It doesn't. Parks. Yeah, I, I don't want to do anything negative about anybody. But. A statistical analysis, you know, the numbers, man, the numbers. Thank you for your show. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Steven, Joe, the man. All right. Now it's just over the top uh, positivity for Joe. And we're going to skip over that, right? Because I don't want to, you know, I want to talk drag racing. Here's the deal. We're headed to Charlotte, guys. But tomorrow we're going to talk Stampede of Speed. Because I want everybody in this audience to drop everything they're doing. And go to the Stampede of Speed at the Texas Motorplex and be a part of a very special race. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be their host, their social media host, the voice of the Stampede of Speed. I'm going to be hanging out with Scott Palmer. Scott Palmer is going to be on the show tomorrow. We're going to talk 
Nitro Pro Mods, Studezilla. What's he going to be doing? What's going on out there? Christy Meyer Johnson, who runs the track, Billy's daughter, who is awesome, is going to be on the show starting at noon. And so I need everybody on there at noon. And if you've got questions, what's going to happen, they'll answer them. And the link is in the chat section. So if you want to go back and find the link, it is in the chat section and we'll do it. I am just uh, very excited about the Stampede of Speed. And I'm trying to finish the show. There we go. Come on, bring it on. Oh, man, our music is not playing. There we go. My music program didn't want me to end the show. All right, guys. Thank you so much to everyone out there. I don't think it could have gone better at Maple Grove for the NHRA. I don't think it could have gone better for this sport. You will tune in. Oh, and I also wanted to mention to Reinhardt, I don't know if he knows this. I happen to know that this was an NFL-adjacent TV show, right? Can't wait to see the numbers. The first game only saw top fuel. They didn't see the rest of the finals. They had to dip out to go to the game. But the second game saw everything. And from what I was told that the numbers for that one were going to be even bigger. And so call it a win. You can always go back and do something a little bit better. You can always go back and through hindsight, try to achieve perfection. And I certainly do. And I think you should. But what happened at the Grove with the Koretskis was amazing. And what happened with the NHRA on Fox team and the NFL, the Open by Brian and Lauren, tying in the power of football, the speed of football, the power of drag racing, the speed of drag racing, the Legion of Boom. It was amazing. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thank you so much. Remember, WFO, we have a mobile app. Please download it, subscribe, write a review, all of those things. See you tomorrow, says Bobby's Bug Barn. All right, guys. Have a great day. Remember, the archive is loaded. I'm sure you missed something in there, right? Get your tickets. See you tomorrow, 12 noon, Stampede of Speed.